Đây, vậy mặt của nó hơi trái trái các bạn Vậy hả? Vậy có, có khi... Ờ, ok Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel So, um, so today in this video, I'm not talking about studying English But I'm gonna invite my cousin to participate into this video and share her personal experience about her uh, studying in Canada after a year. And let's get started. So first part, she's gonna introduce herself a bit. Uh, what does she live in Vietnam and where she's from? Uh, as well as what school does she go to in Vietnam? So yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and my real name is Nam Phuong and I went to Phuc Hanh High School, Ho Chi Minh City University of Education in Saigon, Vietnam and then I went to Canada one year later than Chang so we will have different experiences as well so let's get started Okay guys, so the first question for Rachel is what do you think about Canadian high school compared to Vietnamese high school? What do you like and what do you not like? So I will divide everything into three sections. So first one is teacher and courses and then number two friends and the last one independent life without parents. So I think the final one is the cases of every Vietnamese every Vietnamese study abroad. So the first one is teacher and courses. So you will be required to select six out of eight courses in grade 11. Like I'm, I'm talking about grade 11 at your will. Like if you don't like physics or biology or <laughs> chemistry like I do, so just rule them out from the start. And instead of taking things that you like, for example, me, I took psychology and then arts and then marketing. So in grade 11, you will be required to take math and English compulsorily. So for me, that is not a big problem too. And then for a teacher, um, I think teacher, Canadian teachers are uh, similar to teachers in Vietnam, especially in my Vietnamese high school, because they just like, they just, everyone will want you to like have to improve, yeah. improve or to to get get the lesson yeah yeah especially for for canadian teachers when you when you dare to tell them that oh i'm um, international student who will just arrived this year and i have this this misunderstanding part so could you explain it for me and i'm sure i'm certain they will like spend their, their lunch period <laughs> to to explain it to you yeah i really agree with that because my teacher is really friendly because we don't have any evening classes after yeah. school. We don't have extra like classes. Yeah, so we, we have just have self, homework and go to school and do homework. So that's why teachers are really dedicated into helping you if you have any problems. Yeah. Even if you email them at like 9 p.m. at night, or they are willing to reply it to you. Yeah, I really like it about teachers here. And then for my, my friendships, um, I must say that Canadian friends are very nice people to talk to because they will not let you out. They will form the group of friends that I have now. So they just try to include you into their conversation because they know that you are the newcomers. They will treat you like very well. But later on, you will you will be the one who have to you will have to like broaden the conversation so that you will find yourself natural. Well, like to them yeah that's true so is there any part that you don't like about uh, Canada or you like everything mm, maybe <laughs> there, there are parts that I like but there are of course parts that I don't because the first first of all is um, the problems that I had when I first came to Canada is that I couldn't I I was like a style discipline so when you don't have your parents beside you to remind you to do your homework on time, to go to bed on time, and just to wake wake up for the bus, you will like be likely fall into the chilly things that you created for yourself, like stay up late, to work up late, yeah, do whatever. Because no one pushes you to go into the discipline. Yeah. You live by yourself and you are independent. You are only 16 years old. Oh, and even yeah. even you can be easily broken <laughs> because you will like just you like yeah, everything yeah, here. Like you like everything. Like 
especially food they and are clothes. so they are so cheap and then especially if you go to shopping like i tempt the car to go to shopping all the time and we spend money for for buying clothes and stuff like that but you know it's, it's really cheap and they have a good deal but yeah. i really re re regret it for buying a lot of things you know? Yeah, you can easily waste yeah, that's how your parents' in, That's money. how independence, like, that's how you learn how to be independent. You gotta make mistakes mm -hmm. and you learn from that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so her first year is not, you know, it's not terrible. It's just, yeah, it's not that terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know what? Because Just, yeah, I like try you... to communicate with as much with people as much as possible. Yeah, so that's the point. Yeah, okay, so the second question. Um, what difficulties do you have at the beginning when you just came to Canada? Do you have any difficulties in, in getting adapted to the environment or like yeah. understanding people and like is it hard to study in here? Harder than in, in Vietnam or easier or stuff like that? Can you share? Um, if we talk about things academically, Vietnamese, Vietnamese students will find it much easier. Yeah, much especially math, right? Study. Yeah, because like in, in math in Canada courses. is so much easier than in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that they will have a lot of application parts, which you will like agree that you have studied very little. But the thing is, how can you remember all of them, or you can just understand them enough to apply them into the test as well as the exam? So yeah, that's, so that would be the problem. Yeah, I hate it so much. Cause they have like they have the lab in biology class, <laughs> and then they have yeah. afterwards they have like a bunch of paper for you to fill in, and then like how and how do you understand about the lab? Yeah, especially <clears> the case study. Yeah, which is good. I mean, it's good, but I just like I'm not really into it. I, I don't like writing stuff like about how do you understand. Like I just understand it in my mind and. And how do you yeah. like express and, it and yeah, why express don't you have your idea them, yeah. into writing is another world for me. So, so uh, basically, that is the only difficult that you have. Um, no, the, it, <coughs> to be honest, there is <coughs> one more and more thing is that when I first came to Canada, I couldn't, I couldn't like make out what the teacher said in case in case it speaks too fast for me. Okay, Eunice travel plans. I need to be in New York on Monday, LA on Tuesday, New York on Wednesday, LA on Thursday, New York on Friday. Got it. Got it. Got it. Because oh, like okay. they are not they, they didn't they didn't always speak so fast. But there 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 are honestly there are some parts where they just like they just like a moto. They just like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense for like a majority of people going to Canada for studying yeah. because we all have the same problems at the beginning. That's just because we go to like specifically we go to school like public school and majority of our students is uh, uh, native. like native speakers you know and and because of that teachers have like um they they take uh the they take it for yeah, granted that for everybody granted. understands like, them everybody understands them and of course we have esl class i took esl class for the first semester in grade 12. what what the fuck? But, but in, in grade 10, I mean, in grade 10, <laughs> sorry. Um, but you know, like the ESL teachers know that you are I'm not, uh, you are not native speaker and English is not your first language. But except for that, if you go to another class and you are the only one who yeah, is you are international the students, then, the class, yeah, you have then, to then the try teachers to has no reason things. to slow down the speed and the, the pace of studying because of you. And you, what you have to do is catching up with, uh, mm -hmm. with other people. Yeah, and you have that's to kind of ask sucks, them. you know, but you, you need to try your best. Yeah, you have to stay or you have to like enthusiastically or just effortfully yeah. raise your yeah. hands to ask questions. So that's they all will, up nobody to you. Will pay attention. If you don't try your best and then try to understand and try to catch up with the with this uh, with the pace of study and then you're just gonna be left behind. Yeah. So that's how the world is in reality. So. Yeah, is <laughs> academically they are very easy, but to be interactively you have to yeah. like break the ice and more. then you need more time you know so at the beginning if you are like lost don't worry about that because everybody does yeah. not only you she does and i did mm -hmm. so uh so the the next question is how do you deal with all of the difficulties that you had uh about oh. um mm -hmm. about studying english as well as um the discipline yeah so the first thing to do with the self-discipline, <laughs> you have to actually put yourself into discipline. 
or you will have somebody to wake you up on time like for me at the first months i will i would have her to wake me up on time otherwise i would oversleep and we will miss the bus easily yeah so i need to like wake her up a lot of times <laughs> not only a few times but it's okay, and it's okay. yeah and and yeah and how about them uh, in studying english do you have any um like ways of methods of dealing with them um, to get over simply with with the concepts or the things that you don't understand in class there is no other there's no other way but to ask the teacher or ask the friends or anybody that is around you because yeah they will help you a lot nobody will nobody will say like oh you're stupid we we, we don't want to help you no they won't you just ask yeah them. you just, just don't say it you need to say it because yeah. If you don't say it, no one knows what you want, yeah. right? So you need to say it. That's really good advice. And for the friends, and for like making friends in school at the first, because in in the school that we are studying, that we are going to, they don't have any Vietnamese students. <laughs> Because this is a public school, so international students are minority, you know. Yeah. So let alone Vietnamese students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So there are no other Vietnamese students. You have to remember that. So we will have to, like, talk. As much but that is also possible. a good thing because if you don't have any Vietnamese students, that that's better if you make friends with uh, people from other countries, yeah. and that's just a good thing. You yeah, know. and that's a good thing that I real that I really appreciated when I go to OT because like you, your English skill will be fastly improved. Yeah, in a rapid way. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the next question: Do you have any trouble understanding? No, or this is okay. Repeat again. You stupid. Uh, so the next question: What's your favorite subject at school and why? Um, I'm really into arts. And especially I English and yeah. literature and books, uh, yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I really like English and art. So in art, first you will like in OT, you will learn to you learn to make artistic things out of a variety of materials. For example, you will have green stampings, you will have like oil painting, and you will you will even be taught about. Art history, like romance, yeah, or romanticism, yeah. or renaissance. That's, that's really cool. Baroque, rococo. and and yeah. the other thing that I like about school here is be, is because they have a better source of supplies. Yeah, you know, because like when I studied in Vietnam, and I went to a public school, you know, and I would study uh, we study art, and the only thing we do is drawing on the on drawing the paper. still life. Yeah, <laughs> and with the pencil, life. and that's it. But in here, we have like a lot of source of supplies mm -hmm. for you to apply in different types of, of art and that's just really good yeah yeah and then mm, for english i really i really like the things that the teachers here trying to like they not only they not only teach you about theoretical things on the pages but they try to apply everything into our real life into the practice so like how 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 do you interact between people and people and how will they think about you and how the people from that social classes will think and what they will do it's like you are attending another psychological yeah because uh, because your teacher yeah i know her teachers uh he's really nice yeah and, and the point is that he knows how to like uh, relate, relate things to reality mm -hmm. instead of just talking about theory and yeah. and history and stuff like that yeah that's so really you, cool we, we, yeah you can you will be learn you, you can learn about more profound things then yeah, and then you table. feel more attracted to it because mm. that kind of relate to your life. Yeah. Uh, instead of just talking about something so like high. Yeah, and even <laughs> your critical skills will be improved. Yeah. Because the teachers here they they do know how to like try to be so critic so that you will have to put up a lot of questions yeah, and that's the point. Yeah. And then <laughs> you will yeah, have to yeah. break your brains. Okay, so the next question for Rachel is um what did you why did you choose canada but not any other countries like i know about america australia mm. all of them both of them have really good universities and and high schools too and they are they have a really good reputation but why did you choose canada instead of them mm, i i would say that it is because for my dad <laughs> like he is really an, an expert in fighting countries to study abroad so that he says that 
um, Canada has higher potential to like develop further in the future mm -hmm. and of course and Canada is a multicultural country too so they will have a lot of beneficial immigrant policies that will that it, it, it can be a large advantage for you to like um, move into Canada or be a Canadian citizen yeah so that's kind of related to the next questions that um, I want to ask you mm -hmm. Uh, so the next question is do you want to come back to Vietnam after graduation from university or you want to live here and marry here or have a job here <laughs> and just move on your life here for the rest of your life or mm -hmm. kind of like planning on going to another country mm -hmm. to, Personally, yeah. I really like French guys French guys <laughs> So <laughs> I could just stay here and then and then like find my army I don't know but uh, yeah but like seriously I would love to go back to Vietnam but only for travel and visit purpose so yeah. so your answer is you want to live here yeah I just want to settle yeah. here and because when you live in a speaking like English speaking and even French speaking country and you will meet a lot of types of people and you will have like the chances of much broadened when you just when you only live in your native country yeah you will be globalized a lot so that in the future yeah, you will so have I like mean, yeah so i mean like uh so for rachel's uh, information i think speaking of uh, vietnam then you get a, uh, in vietnam if you go back to vietnam you have more friends and mm -hmm. your family's there and you feel more like familiar and stuff like that but speaking of benefits and then your future then of course if you live there they give you more opportunities not because canada is a developed country but because uh in here you meet like different types of people yeah. and people from uh, all around the world and stuff like that it's really multicultural and that's really cool yeah and especially people like us like we live far away from our family so we will have to improve another soft skill to like protect yeah, ourselves independent into... skill and stuff like that yeah yeah okay so the last but not least question is what advice can you give to anyone who wants to go to canada for study in high school in general um don't be shy you will like Canada is a very great country and studying abroad is a very lucky thing that not everyone has a chance to do so if you are in here right now just try your best like just live like a person here just talk to people here and just do the things that they do here yeah yeah just try to yeah. like and don't try to make your self esteem to go down yeah. because uh, I feel like it's typical that everyone has a really low self-esteem when they move to another country yeah, especially, where they know like, nothing countries. about it. But don't be shy and don't make your mm. self-esteem to go down because that's just the, like, the mental barrier to prevent you from being yourself and develop yourself, mm. right? So just, just be strong and then you get over your problems very fast. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all of the thing that we need to do in yeah. our q a session today so i hope that you like it and if you are if you go with us until this moment i seriously thank you and in case you like this video give it a, not, a like and subscribe and if you don't like share it <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much rachel and if you like rachel please comment below and then she's gonna appear in my next video too and we talk about really another exciting topic about high school. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for watching video today, guys. And hope you have a really great time being home with your family. Be and be safe in this pandemic until it's over. Okay, thank you so much and see you guys later. You.